I'm sure you've heard of the FIRE movement, financial independence, retire early. Well, we have three amigos back to talk about how we became financially independent and retired early. Well, two out of three. That's not bad. The third one's <laughs> almost there. <laughs> but the reason I want to talk about the FIRE movement is the three of us are ostracized from it. One of the things that I did right when I retired is I found the FIRE movement and tried to reach out, communicate, and frankly, being a real estate-based person who retired early, they don't want to hear it. The FIRE movement's all about stocks. It's all about net worth. It's all about the 4% rule. And uh, just this morning, I shared on the Daily Financial News, someone who was deep in the FIRE movement. I wish I remembered his name, but it's in the Daily Financial News. Talked about becoming a doctor at a hospice center and that that relationship with folks who are living out their final days, weeks, and months has changed his opinion. The FIRE movement is really focused on sacrifice, minimalism, getting to a net worth, and then living on 4%. There just are, frankly, better ways. And the three of us have gotten there. Two of us have actually quit or retired. The third is on the cusp. So, uh, Matt, uh, what do you think of all the FIRE movement? I mean, I think that um, I agree with it, generally speaking, except for the path to get there. Like, when you and I did that exercise, I thought that was a great exercise and something I never really thought of. When we did that exercise probably a year and a half or so ago, and you said, hey, if you wanted to live like your best life, like forget about minimalism, forget about not vacationing, forget about having to, you know, borrow a friend's van and then borrow a bunch of equipment to then go on a trip and then really enjoy it. It was like, what would you spend? And we looked at it and it was like a nutty number. It was like $40,000 a month. Yeah. And so I was the most expensive, but it's because I had three kids young kids. And so at the end of the day, because now I have to pay for five of everything. Um, and which I which believe it or not, I did recognize before we had the kids, but yeah, it's crazy. So as I looked at it, I said, I don't want to build my life to live minimally on things. I want to do whatever I want to do. That to me is real freedom. Is it really financial freedom if you have to live with a budget? Like is that real freedom? Like I suppose that if the other option is 40, 40 for 40, I suppose that's freedom. But I would rather literally not look at my checkbook other than to balance it and just go, yeah, sure, we can do that. Yeah, sure, we can do that. And the only way you can do that is with cash flowing assets. Yeah. Yeah, the FIRE movement, um, it kind of leads, like the article talked about, it kind of leads people to set a number and kind of there's only one way. And if you're not speaking their vocabulary, you're not included. I actually believe net worth is a one of the most bogus numbers out there. And if you happen to be net worth based in stocks and you run into a bear market, good luck, right? So, uh, Dan, I know you've had some uh, interesting interactions because you do try to, to communicate with people in the parking lot a lot. So, uh, what what, uh, what what have you seen? So, I I love the four words: financial independence, retire early. I, I love yeah. the the whole idea that that puts in our mind. But when you get into any of those communities. A lot of the larger groups are sponsored by brokerages of people who own, who manage stocks, right? They're trying to say stocks are the way to do this. So there's five things that get me kicked out of almost every financial independence group. Luckily, some of them will do subgroups. Like there's choose FI house hacking, choose FI real estate. But if you go into the choose FI forums and you say anything about what we do, it's just all of these people who knew somebody who lost money in a rental right? Well, just attack you. So the first thing, financial independence is not about being frugal, period. I'm with Matt. If we had to be frugal, I'd still be working, right? I'd, I'd, I'd be one of those people trapped in a job, working for the weekend, hoping to retire at regular age with enough energy left to, in, to enjoy the time. But since it's not about being frugal, I retired early. And, and I figured it was about a 10-year time horizon. Frugal for a while? Yes. But frugal in retirement, no. It was about five years. You know, like Matt, you're you're taking your first family vacation. I was in my 40s before I took my first vacation. I, um, but at 40, when I started, it was eight years later. Then I started taking one month vacations, and now I'm on a permanent 12 month vacation every day, <laughs> right? So it, it was for a while. Um, the second thing with the financial independence retire early community that I just don't get is that money is the goal, and and uh, this is where uh, on some level, uh. Some of our viewers and me, I think, would, would disagree. The, the, it's it's the biggest portfolio, the most cash flow, the next, and it's always what's next, what's next, what's next. It's it's almost mind breaking when I tell some people, 
I'm not sure if 16 is too many, right? I, I, I just want the cash flow to be financially free and go and goof off and do whatever I want anytime I want. Um, and for me, that was a number, not a number then to the next number. And, and so the right. third one with financial independence, retire early, the, the part from this article that you shared that I kind of had a problem with was um, people find purpose in work. So when you retire early or when you retire, what's your purpose? If you have to be compensated for your purpose, I think you have issues. Yeah. I think there's a great sense of pride to find purpose in work. Yeah. But if your purpose is work, um, that is not a life to look back at when we're 80 or 90 in a, in a home thinking, oh, I wish I'd spent more time in the office, right? That's not what people are going to say. Yeah. Um, and then the last two, these don't get me kicked out as much, but stocks are volatile. Mm -hmm. Like I, I watched this guy, Joe Kuhn, K-U-H-N. He's on YouTube. He retired at 54. He used the three buckets method for stocks. He's all totally different strategy than me. I wouldn't own a stock if somebody gave it to me. I would sell it and buy real estate, right? And his strategy sounds great. In a bear market, he's got three years in bucket one. So bear markets generally don't last that long before you would even touch bucket two. Like he's got a strategy for this, but he has to watch the stock market mm -hmm. in, in double- mm -hmm. In double my life, rents have never gone down market-wide in a five-year period. I'll never have to think about that or worry about it. And yeah. I have a gap, a buffer, just in case it did, to where I wouldn't have to think about it if they did. So the, the stock thing is, is based on net worth, a fictitious number that can change. You know, my 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 cash flow has never gone up or down by $300,000 in a month because some, some guy owning a company sent a tweet, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then the, the last one that I kind of disagree with, with a lot of the people in the financial dependent retire early community is on SSI. Most of them base their portfolio around getting social security at, at the highest age because you're going to get the most and they haven't done the math. Mm -hmm. If you wait till 70, which is the recommendation in that community is to wait till 70, the, the now new, it used to be 68, now it's 70. It takes 18 years to get back to break even on missing out on 30% of social security if you took it at 62. So that means you're 88 when you break even if you had taken social SSI at 62. I say any of these kind of concepts in those communities, I'm the outsider. And I'm like, hey, great. Have your opinion. And uh, let me know how work feels. <laughs> yeah. The, the last thing I want to talk about and really got to me in that article and the reason I sent it to you guys so we could talk about it today was um, – Gary V is somebody I follow, right? And he's always said for years, if you want to really get a, a handle on your life, go to an old folks home and just talk to the people there. And it is really interesting to see them talk about regret. Now, this article and obviously the book, which I don't have yet, I've ordered, but don't have yet, um, really talked about the regret of the fire movement, right? Because it creates a goal on a number and then it's, you know, get to the number and like, life's great. It's just... It's just not the, it's, it's not healthy. And um, yeah, back to Gary Vee. I think, I think life's about being happy, right? If you're happy in the 40, 40 life and in the parking lot, drinking beers with your buddy, I want to shake your hand. You've, you've figured it out. Yeah. I think most people lie to themselves. I think most people are attracted to the fire movement because they can say one thing. I'm working towards retirement early. I think that the, if the R and the E on fire is what people can say they're doing. And it's just, it's a false, it's a false narrative, in my opinion. We'll go back to Dion. There's one beautiful thing about the financial independent retiree community. It leads you to your people. Hmm. I wouldn't have found, um, afford anything with Paula Pant. I wouldn't have found bigger pockets. I wouldn't have found one rental at a time. I wouldn't have found any of the content that I, I wouldn't have found Graham Stephan, meet Kevin, like in the, you know, 17 to 18, 2017 to 18, when they were primarily doing financial videos, uh, so it it does a good job of getting it out there. And and then you have to kind of funnel down and go, okay, who's who's actually talking to me? Because it's not beat the bush, great YouTube channel, but he but it's literally how can you save every single penny, scrimp on every single thing, ride a bike to work, live close to like all of these things that I'm never gonna do, right? But the concept, sure, but who did it lead me to? It led me to my people. There you go. Any closing thoughts, Matt? Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, I'm I'm four days into vacation and I'm not missing work at all. And I haven't looked at work email for one second. It's been wonderful. <clears throat> um, and so I think that everybody has to find what, what fits and works for them. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to live 
the second half of my life, I hope I have 45 more years. Probably not. But if I have 45 more years, I want to live doing it whenever I want, being around my kids, being around their kids, you know, being around my wife, you know, spending time with all my friends and doing whatever I want. Like that's the best part about this. Like this week, this trip came together over the course of like literally a few weeks. And to be able to do that and not have to look at every single price tag on every little thing, like it was just like it was convenient. And so I had the entire trip set up in about two hours, mm. you know. Airbnb, uh, car, plane, everything. And so I think if they'd spent, spend more of that time planning on how do I do this in a way that gives me more freedom, like real freedom, I think that they'll probably enjoy it even more. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, where can they find you, Matt? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram and live streams on Sunday, 1130 a.m. Eastern time. Awesome. And Dan, where can they find you? You can find me right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, where I continue to break the brains of everybody who knows me because mm-hmm. the last 10 years uh, are very different than the next 10 years. Yeah, sure. Like that, like that. Thanks, guys.